Three. <laughs> I hate that thing so much. It's so weird. <laughs> uh, all right, let's kick off this meeting. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so excited for our second preview event. Um, this is a series of events that we're doing leading up to our Accelerating the Accelerators event, which I'll get into a little bit more in a second. But today, uh, today's topic, we're going to be having a really engaging and lively discussion around mentorship in our virtual world. And I really want to emphasize um, that we really want to hear from you all and share experiences, as well as obviously hear from our amazing guest speaker who I'll introduce in a second, but um, a little bit about communities.org for those of you who might not know us or be part of our membership community. Um, we're a small but mighty team uh, with a suite of, of additional consultants all over the globe. Um, and we're all remote actually. So didn't get hit as hard as COVID in terms of the team dynamics as some other organizations. Uh, but I'm based in Guatemala City, Sarah Joy is in Colorado, Ray is now in DC, Rena's in Canada and Missy is in Utah. Um, so who are we? What do we do? We have sort of two bucks of work. We have a membership community that's a global community of conveners. And by conveners, I mean any individual or organization who's passionate about bringing other people, other organizations together to create some sort of catalytic impact, whether that be social or environmental. So that could look like an accelerator or incubator fellowship type of program, leadership training, coaching, um, impact investment, event orga organizing. Uh, policy advocacy type of work, social justice, diversity, equity, inclusion type of work, you name it. If you're in the social impact ecosystem, this is the community for you. Um, we have tons of tools and activities for uh, bringing groups of people together, uh, as well as these as monthly member calls and a really dynamic and engaging supportive global community. So if you're interested, I'll leave my email in the chat in a second, um, but please feel free to reach out to me about membership. And then we also have an advisory services arm where we do consulting and contracting work for large foundations, corporations, universities around convening. So please get in touch with us if any of that is of interest to you. So I'm so, so excited and so honored to present our guest speaker, Lynn Anderson, who's the mentor network director for the Miller Center for Social Entrepreneurship, uh, which is one of one of my favorite uh, accelerator programs. So um, she will be leading us on our discussion today. But before I hand off the mic to her, I just wanna go over the welcome and introductions really quickly, um, which we're doing right now. And I'm gonna do an introduction to our Accelerating the Accelerator event, which is why we're having this preview event. And then I'm gonna hand it off to Lynn. So um, our Accelerating the Accelerators event, we've been doing this since the beginning of communers.org. Um, this year it's virtual for the very first time. It will be August 10th through 12th. Um, we're hosting it at different time zones just to try and capture as many <laughs> global time zones as possible. We actually, oh, I'll get into that in a second. But so the main themes uh, for each day uh, are broken down into different levels of the ecosystem. So day one is Thriving Founders, where we're going to talk all about both the founders that entrepreneur support organizations support, but also for the founders of entrepreneur support organizations like accelerators, incubators, fellowships, et cetera. So talking about wellness, talking about impact measurement, diversity, equity, inclusion, storytelling, um, financial, financial sustainability, financial resources, you name it. The first day we're focusing on thriving founders. The second day is gonna be focused on thriving organizations. So that is really the, the entrepreneur support organizations themselves. So internally company success, team burnout, um, adapting their work to virtual uh, environments, all, and also sort of the external facing impact measurement, storytelling, um, financial sustainability. And then the third day is all going to be all about a thriving ecosystem. So how do we create a more collaborative, dynamic ecosystem where we share resources, share knowledge, and get rid of sort of that competition, competitive mentality and scarcity um, sort of mindset. Our core partners um, are as follows. If you're interested in being sort of a, a promotional partner and you're at sort of the ecosystem level, please uh, contact me. We would love to have you help us promote this event. And if, it, even if you're not a core partner, any promotion that you all as our community want to uh, provide us with is, is always welcome. So I can send you our social media kit if that's of interest to you as well. Um, tickets and pricing, uh, general admission, 
And we have last minute pricing, but also I just want to highlight if you become a commuters.org member, which that starts at $250, you get a free ticket to the event. So we'll paste the Eventbrite link in the chat later, but we would love to have all of you participate. Um, and right now until June 18th, we are going to have, we're having an open call for session proposals. We can paste that forms link into the chat later as well, but we would love, love, love to hear from you all. The entire agenda really is being co-created and led by our community, not necessarily by commuters.org. And so we really want to hear from you all um, what sort of sessions you'd like to lead. Um, and upcoming events, we have our preview event on July 8th, which will all be about amplifying our impacts, creating a thriving ecosystem of support for ESOs. And with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna hand it over to Lynn. Thank you so much, Lynn, again, for your time and for uh, leading us in this dynamic, engaging discussion around mentorship. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, uh, hello everyone, nice to meet you. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna do a couple of things. One, I'm gonna, share with you right now a link to the my presentation which is a, a pdf copy and um I, I don't know how you feel about have, looking at it on the screen as well if you want would rather look at brady bunch squares or the okay great so let me let me um let me open that up uh let's see And now you'd think you'd get faster at this after how many months of doing it, but. Well, they keep updating all of these platforms as well. So then every time they update, I have to relearn where everything yeah, exactly. is. Exactly. Uh, oh, I probably should have just shared the window, but uh, anyway. All right, so. Um, let me get rid of this. Can you see that my my control bar is that? Oh, um, I can just see your the window that you're in. Okay, fabulous. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, so Miller Center has been around. We've been accelerating entrepreneurs. Um, our first class was in 2004. Uh, we are part of the University of Santa Clara, but we are um, have been historically primarily outwardly facing. Uh, we were uh, founded by. Uh, a president who looked at Silicon Valley and, and also looked at his Jesuit values and uh, uh, decided that 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 the two should meet. And he he got a couple of uh, professors from the business school to to ponder how to um, help help entrepreneurs in other countries for social good. They formed um, an idea. They developed it. They um, offered it. They they searched for entrepreneurs who are interested in, in our help. Um, and they firm, formed the first cohort of about approximately 10 entrepreneurs in um, 2004. Uh, since then, we've done a lot. Um, and uh, we've gotten a, some of our accelerator. We, we've actually been listening to what we teach and actually uh, applying what we teach to our own operations. And obviously, therefore, we have a mission and vision. Um, and I am the director of the Mentor Network. Um, I've been the director for uh, uh, three and a half years. And um, prior to that, I was a mentor. So I've been a mentor with Miller Center for more than 10 years. Um, and I've been the director of the Mentor Network for more than three. So uh, we have a, a mission, a, a center-wide uh, mission and vision. And then we have mentor. I have personal objectives that I set for myself and our organization with regards to our mentors. Um, and so this, this is our overarching um, policy, uh, and it's important, um, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but um, our mission and our vision are key to enabling us to get the right sort of mentors and volunteers uh, to work with us. So, you know, we, we, broadly, we broadcast this and we live and breathe it. So, so um, our performance to date, we've accelerated um, uh, almost 1,200 social entrepreneurs. We also have um, within, because we're located within a university, we also offer um, student fellowships where those students uh, uh, go out in the field. After a year of preparing to do work for our social entrepreneurs, they go out into the 
uh, uh, into the world and to help our, our entrepreneurs from around the world. Uh, and they're in residence for the summer months and then they come back to campus their senior year and they write a, um, a, a thesis on what they on their projects. So we've accelerated 144 students. Many we've um, we've seen many valedictorians uh, of the university come through our program. We've seen lots of Fulbrights uh, come through our program, and um, um, I also some from um, the Stanford um, uh, Knight Hennessy program. So it's a it's a it's a very well respected program, and the students are terrific people. Um, and um, we're sending them off into the world to be amazing um, uh, cha uh, change makers. Uh, we've, uh, we've helped our entrepreneurs raise more than 750 million post program. We, as, as our impacts are, we're not, we are somewhat agnostic about um, the type of impact. So it could be um, broad and, and um, shallow. When I say shallow, meaning it just um, affects the, uh, maybe one portion of their life, or it could be um, narrow and deep where we're talking about uh, life-saving changes. Um, so it's hard to actually um, characterize that in a single button, but we, we basically count the number of lives improved by our social entrepreneurs, which is at 450 million plus. And we currently, um, as of December, had more than 300 men mentors in our network. So when I say a mentor, what is that? So we have, um, our mentors are primarily volunteers um, and they enter uh, exclusively understanding that they are volunteers. Um, so so we're a, we, we are a self-selecting uh, organization. The mentors um, are the one, they come to us because they, they wanna make a difference. Uh, they're interested in our mission. Um, and uh, they have the time in their lives and the experience in their lives to be able to want to put that to work to good to good work. So you can um, this was from a couple of years ago, we have to update it um, this year, but uh, it hasn't changed significantly. Most of our mentors are retired or semi retired. Um, many of them are, are members of boards and chair members founders, co-founders, CEOs, and C-suites, uh, and, and then also a lot of directors and consulting experts. Um, in the beginning, it was all from Silicon Valley. Uh, when I became the mentor network, it was primarily from Silicon Valley, um, but now we, are, um, we have been expanding and we are getting um, a broader and uh, more global uh, set of mentors. So we do have mentors um, uh, in the various countries and we're looking for more mentors in the various countries in which we work. So, um, but, they're, but, but they are all uh, volunteers. And that's, that's a key, um, I think that's a, that's a key differentiator for, for us compared to a lot of other global um, mentor networks. Um, so what do our mentors do? We have, we have basically um, a core mentor, a core mentor team that does what um, our premier program, which is a six to nine month mentoring mentorship program. But we also have had mentors who are interested in helping develop our content. Um, we also use mentors to provide feedback panels, either um, virtually or in person um, prior to COVID that is. Uh, we also use our mentors to help select other, um, to help interview uh, potential mentors and also to interview potential participants in our programs, the social entrepreneurs. Um, and then we also use mentors who um, may like to focus on one particular area rather than um, help our entrepreneurs develop their business plan and um, prepare their businesses to grow. You know, things like financial impact, investment readiness, those sorts of things. Recently, in the last year, we um, we have started offering a specific leadership coaching, and that is um, slightly different than mentoring. Our, our coaches are basically helping our social entrepreneurs with issues that they may have personally, uh, or, you know, or leadership issues specifically related to their company that go beyond um, uh, helping the organization. Oops, helping the organization. Um, with their business plan, uh, sometimes we they need uh, leadership coaching, sometimes they need uh, presentation development skills, those sorts of things. And so we're adding a component, which is um, adding coaches, um, certified coaches who provide that uh, uh, service to our entrepreneurs in support of 
um, the other things that they work with, uh, work on with us. So, you know, when I talk about mentors, um, I want to be a little, I want to be clear about what that means for, to us. Uh, a mentor um, is a little bit of a consultant, a little bit of a coach, and a little bit of a guide. Um, and they sit in that sweet spot. Um, we see that mentors are there to help the entrepreneur learn. Um, they are not there to give the entrepreneur the answers. Uh, so, um, but on occasion, they may want to uh, impart uh, some, some business wisdom in, in the form of, you know, it's somewhat like consulting, but they are there to actually help the entrepreneur maybe give them some wisdom and then enhance the entrepreneur to make the right decisions. Uh, many of our mentors also make, can help our entrepreneurs, help their entrepreneurs make connections within their own personal networks. Uh, we also help um, in general in, at, at Miller Center, we, we have uh, our, our own Miller Center network and we help make connections to um, uh, internal other, other mentors in our network and things like that. Um, we have several mentors that will help to sponsor um, their advancement and help them with their fundraising. Um, and um, we also, um, as a mentor, we anticipate that we want them primarily to support their growth, their survival their, as a company and their growth. Um, and we do this by, you know, through, uh, not through telling them what to do, but, um, helping them confirm, confirm their understanding. And then the final piece, which we find really important is um, uh, the original, one of the original founders of Miller Center has said it best. He said it is a really lonely world out there for, entrepreneur, for social entrepreneurs around the world. It's, it's a very lonely job. Uh, and having a mentor um, uh, that's there for a weekly call has been um, a witness to a lot of experience and has been one of the things that we we have learned from, from our feedback that is really important to our social entrepreneurs and actually also to our mentors. So um, to, to walk the walk and talk the talk, we also um, have set aside our, a, um, our Miller Center ways of working. And we, we, we talk about this every time we have a mentor kickoff meeting. We talk about this when we're recruiting mentors. We talk about it when we're um, uh, 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 kicking off new, new cohorts, uh, that a good relationship to start out, to make a quality mentor-mentee relationship. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, entrepreneurs and mentors and Miller Center staff should follow our ways of working. Um, I don't, um, I can read it to you, but you, you'll be able to read it at your leisure. Um, and then we have some key practices um, and structures that I believe have really um, helped make the mentor experience um, um, one that is so widely received as positive. We have, you know, of course, I've, I've, as I've talked about earlier, we have these core principles, which enables us to attract the right um, and right the right sort of person who wants to be a mentor uh, with the right mindset, um, and then and then once they're attracted, we we provide for them a predictable framework for mentoring, so that it's it's uh, it's all about the the new thing in their life every time they get a new assignment, a new entrepreneur to mentor. The new thing in their life is the entrepreneur and their business. It isn't um, the the curriculum or the the things that need to get done. Um, and the predictable framework also um, helps to um, sort of frame the conversations that and the the relationship that builds from those conversations. So um, the and the other thing we do is we we make sure that the entrepreneurs are in in a predictable stage. So we get we want to make sure we have a controlled cohort of social enterprises that they fit our that, that they fit the level of training that we provide and the level of mentoring that that um, that is our sweet spot. We have, as I said, standardized curriculum. Um, it is all offered virtually and video through video templates and um, examples. And we don't do any casework. 
it's a it, it's a bit like a business plan or a mini business school, but we do no casework. It's all practical, so that the entrepreneur must be preparing the um, assignments based on their own business. Um, and many of the oftentimes the materials are um, they're they're not new to the entrepreneur, but they may um, so, so they don't necessarily have to start from scratch, but that but they get a chance to talk about it uh, with someone else and get a chance to think about their business with uh, with uh, other mentors um, with other folks in the room. Uh, we also have program administrators that become, in, in essence, the bad cop, so that the the uh, the mentor isn't the one who has to say um, you've passed, you failed, you know, you're 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 moving through the program. The mentor is there to support the entrepreneur, and the program manager is the one who um, you know keeps the clock, makes sure everybody keeps running, uh, and and just administers the program. Uh, another key thing that we do is we have a ratio of two mentors to one social entrepreneur. We've uh, we've experimented with this early um, uh, in the last five years and have found that two mentors uh, provide more feedback, useful feedback to a social entrepreneur. Having three people on a call is, um, there's, there's a tiebreaker, so there, there can't be a tie. Um, and not one mentor knows everything. And in fact, we'll have a different perspective than a second mentor. And so our, we find that our mentors love working with their other mentor and also helping the social entrepreneur. Um, the key thing that we believe so solidifies the relationship is a mandatory weekly team call, approximately an hour. Um, we, we feel very strongly about this, that the mentors should be available every single week. That's the other reason we have two mentors to one call, because not always life works out that everyone can make a call. Um, but we do feel strongly that you should that mentors should um, be able to make at least 80% of of their individual calendars, but that the mentor is always available should the entrepreneur need it. Uh, and then mentors actually are given leeway to make a judgment call about what's important on any particular day or week for an uh, for a social entrepreneur, whether they need to focus on the call or whether they need to take time off to do uh, deal with COVID, for example. Um, and we have basically, we, we advertise these positions for mentors um, and they're discrete. They have a, a, a start and an end so that the uh, mentors know when they're starting and when they're ending with us at Miller Center. And, and then the final piece is that we have a culminating event in pre-COVID times. It was often uh, an in-person week-long sessions with um, similar, with, with panelists and the mentors getting to work with their entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurs getting to work together as a cohort. Um, and those culminating events are, are the, the frosting on the cake for our mentors and our social entrepreneurs. It, it makes the entire six or three, six or nine month process um, um, encapsulated in a, in a, an event and an understanding. So those are, and, and everybody in the mentor network walks away jazzed um, um, by having participated in them. So we, it's, oops, it's, in, it's an important. Um, sorry about this. No, Lynn, we had a, we had a couple of questions actually that are linked to this, um, if you don't mind. I don't mind at all. I'm tired of hearing my voice. <laughs> So the first, the first question um, is sort of, I, I wanna go into sort of the mentorship side of things, which uh, Lauren asked about how do you ma match a mentor with a mentee? What happens if the fit is not right? And then there's some specific questions about like the cohorts of entrepreneurs. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so we, uh, how we match a mentor with a mentee, we have, well, one, we, for the fit, we, we do interview um, and, and look for uh, any flags that might be a problem, both for mentors and for entrepreneurs um, on their ability to listen, their ability to collaborate, you know, uh, and their ability to, to make decisions and commit to the time, right? So, so there's a prior to even making, getting to the point where we're making a pairing, there's a selection process that happens, right? But we also then, when we're interviewing the entrepreneurs, we 
We'll ask them what, what they are looking for in a mentor. Uh, we also have um, a, a three mentor panel that interviews the entrepreneurs and, and we look at their impact ass assessment we, and we look at their impact model, their business model and their financial models in those interviews. And we get an, the, we, we have experienced mentors who've mentored many before get an idea of who we think or what, what sort of experience, uh, business experience in a mentor that they would need. Um, oftentimes it's a financial advisor or financial planner you know, um, uh, CFO type, but it, it might also be somebody who, who is um, sales and marketing, whatever it is. So we have an idea of that. And then we, um, we publish the list of accepted entrepreneurs into, uh, to, the, to our mentor network and the mentors will self-select on who they think can help and we get their top three choices. And so we have this, we have the input of uh, mentors preferences. We have the input of the entrepreneur's desires, and we have the input of the pan, the interview panelists assessment. And then um, it's a little bit like a, the, the seating chart at a wedding. You, 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 have, you have this mix and you do the best you can. Um, and then we also, on the teams, we try and um, vary the style, you know, because sometimes um, some of us are direct and blunt and others are, um, um, uh, much more diplomatic and and perhaps um, more uh, more more heartfelt, and so we try and have a a, a balanced team. We also try and do um, uh, gender parity on the team if we can. We have a fair number of women in our, in our network. So um, and then we have a process of. Um, for escalation if things don't work. But it um, it doesn't often happen. Maybe maybe um, maybe one one entrepreneur per cohort might have some issues. But um, yeah, it, it but it's it's uh, actually for for where we have to break up a team. I think it's I don't think it's ever happened. We have we have failures to communicate that we work on. Um, but um, our mentors are pretty much senior, senior folks. They understand, you know, for the most part, how to how to be professional, and and so um, we will. We you know, so we have a process. Yeah. So, in the case of if there's a is a bad match, which seems like that rarely happens, what do you guys do to re-engage that entrepreneur? Do you find them a different mentor, or the do, or just, has that just not really happened in your experience? Well, you know, actually, sometimes what happens is the 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 mentor that's that if if the mentor is a problem, they will back out, and then the other mentor is there, and uh, then we give them the option of do you want to do you want to have a second one on your team. Or if, if it's near the end, which is usually when we hear about these things, because um, uh, um, it takes a while to, to, to develop the, either the trust or the, the dissonance, right? Um, we'll let the entrepreneur just go with the single mentor. That's the other benefit of having two mentors. There's usually um, um, moderating effect on, on personalities. Um, so, yeah. That's great. And then uh, Shuresh has a question about, do you have a virtual mentoring platform to facilitate the meeting and capture data metrics, et cetera, for the mentorship program? We are, we have a platform that is merging. Um, we have a, a, a community that we offer that provides the curriculum online and provides a, um, an, a sort of a tracking of what's, what's going on. Um, we are, um, and I'm one of the, one of the data people that likes to collect data that a lot of our, uh, Historically, there have been a lot of, um, um, uh, we just did, we did a whole brain analysis, right? And so we've got a, a fair number of entrepreneurial thinkers in our organization itself. And a lot of people who, who lead with their heart, um, not very many, many of us are data collection. And so we have the data, it's not as, it's not as structured and organized in a, in a, you know, but we're working on that. So we're, we're shifting to shit Salesforce and, Lots of lots of data collection. And speaking of data, really quickly, going back to the entrepreneurs, in terms of how how you measure lives improved, uh, what does that mean for you all? 
So that did. we leave to the entrepreneur uh, to, to, to give us the number. We just say, how many lives you know, have you touched? Um, you know, what's, what is your impact? And um, after, after the program, you know, they'll have maybe a different, a slightly different way that they count it. But in the past, we have, um, we have just left it to the entrepreneur because we haven't wanted to be able to make that judgment on, uh, from our end. And the cohorts of the entrepreneurs, how long do they last uh, the cycles? Uh, so, so it's changing a little bit, but uh, the, the online portion and oh, by the way, and all of our stuff has been online because we've been international. So COVID in that essence really didn't change our, the way we operate. The only thing it did change was um, that we would once a year bring in the, um, the leaders of the various cohorts in for an in-residence. That thing, that has gone away since COVID. Um, but um, they are, they are the the online portion is 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 six to seven months. And during COVID, we had to extend it. Um, uh, and then the preparation for an in residence might be a, a, a three or four weeks, and then the in residence. And we are we are um, we are we responded to COVID with having recently having three month you know res, you know business crisis crisis business planning um, assistance to our mentors. And so we had particular um, materials that we offered that way. And that was, a, that was a three month program. So six months stretched to nine months or three months are generally what we do, yeah. And Derek wanted to know if uh, mentors help teach the curriculum and do, do they develop, like co-develop the curriculum with you to ensure consistency point of view at all for the entrepreneurs? So, so the, we, we have mentors who, who have participated and volunteered and actually were the ones that helped create the curriculum. Um, and we are in the middle of a redesign and we're getting more mentors involved in the curriculum. Um, but we don't have mentors that are expert in um, um, uh, education and delivery of education, right? And so we are, we are also uh, I'm using experts in that to help us think about how we how we uh, create our curriculum but it's it has been and will remain to be very practical there's um, you know it, it's all focused on the entrepreneur doing the work and the mentor um, uh, giving them feedback on on the work as they progress through the, the curriculum and Naz, Naz, Nazish wanted to know if um, do you find that your social entrepreneurs that are in your program um, prefer mentors to be paired with mentors who have also founded social enterprises, or is it a mix of different backgrounds when it comes to the mentor side? Um, it's a mix of different backgrounds. I mean, the uh, founders founders um, generally are on a team because they understand in they understand the whole fundraising piece better than, than say the traditional, I don't know, an IBM, say an IBM executive who, who might be a mentor in our network. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, an IBM executive also understands, you know, the value of putting systems in place so that you can grow your organization, right? Um, and so it's a mix. Um, I, um, I haven't looked at data on, on exactly exact preferences, but I would say that um, I think it's more of a, um, personal choice and, and more of a, a, an emotional relational choice than it is a, an experiential choice. So if they get along, it doesn't matter whether they work for IBM or whether they were a founder, if they're getting wisdom and support, I, uh, that's what they find. Yeah. Have you ever had um, an entrepreneur that didn't find a valuable match? And if so, how do you keep them engaged? Um, or is it sort of not a I don't want to say requirement or expectation that all of the entrepreneurs in your program will get matched with mentors. So um, our biggest problem with with entrepreneurial entrepreneurs expectations is that um, because we are based in Silicon Valley. And even though we tell them on our website, we tell them when they apply, we tell them when they're in the program, we tell them after they've graduated that that we don't guarantee funding. Everyone in the back of their mind is thinking Silicon Valley money. I want to get into this program because I want to get funded. So uh, we have to, you know, and and that's 
that that's okay that they have that expectation. Um, but what we also sometimes find would be entrepreneurs that 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 are in the program because they think if they're just they just need to do the assignments. They just they don't really they just have to go through the motions. They don't actually have to like or agree or think about or answer a mentor's questions deeply. They just have to graduate and get that certificate because the minute they get that certificate from Silicon Valley, that means they'll get funding. Um, and so a lot of entrepreneurs will think that, and, and, but many of them are, have open minds and will listen and learn, right? And, and those are the type that we love to have, the ones that, have, um, that are not really interested in learning. Um, that that have their own opinions and and it's what what it is may be disappointed um, and and uh, not get very much out of the program and there isn't anything we can do about that it's it's about expectations so we try very hard to manage expectations um, so that we don't have that disappointment and uh, Inche wanted to know what type of programmatic activities do you facilitate to build a more organic relationship and compensate for assigned mentorship versus natural relationships? So, um, we don't, at Miller Center, we don't pay our mentors. Um, and it's, we're finding it a little bit, I'm finding now um, as, I, as I recruit from other, as I interview potential new mentors from other parts of the world, Oftentimes, or as I interview younger entrepreneurs or business people in the United States who are working, I, I find the question of, well, do you, do you compensate your mentors? And, and our answer is no, you know, it's, it's volunteer. Um, and in, in the US, when we, when, when we formed the, the, the fact that we were helping startups in doing social enterprises, it, it was sort of an anthem that we, would be, um, we would want to have volunteers. We don't want to pay. And at the time we didn't, the Miller Center didn't have the funds to, to pay anyone. Um, but other, other regions of the world um, definitely have, um, don't have the same mindset and that payment is, is a recognition of value. Um, and is is important to get the participants. Um, we haven't had that, and and we I fully recognize that that's a valid model. It's just not what we do. Um, um, and then, but we do um, when if we go to another country, or you know, obviously when we hold in residences, um, that we will host the mentors, and you know, and they get to participate. If if they travel for us to another country, we will pay their expenses. We just don't compensate them for their time. Um, and for that, that's perfect leading into Derek's question in terms of like what, what the typical mentor commitment is in, in terms of hours over the course of a program. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it varies by the mentor, right? Some mentors uh, love to dive deep and obsess and, and want to spend lots and lots of time, but um, on maybe on a particular topic or a particular module that they're working on. And, and um, so, but, but we have an average of, I think we, we tell the mentors when to expect roughly five hours a week, you know, one hour for the call, a couple of hours to prep and a couple of hours to, you know, to respond for calls. Um, that's rough, roughly what it is. Although, um, you know, some material, if the entrepreneur has a lot of material to read, or if they happen to have a very complex financial model that was designed by, you know, McKinsey two, three years ago, and that the entrepreneur isn't sure what, how it works, but they, they're, they were taught how to fill it out, right? There's, there probably is a lot more deciphering and time spent in something like that. But on average, we say five hours a week. Um, yes. Have you had former mentees become mentors in your program? Uh, yes. Uh, we actually have, um, we have a, an individual from India who, um, went through our program and is also now a mentor and we, he lives in India and, um, uh, we, we don't have it enough to, for me to collect data on their experience, um, um, but uh, 
I have, well, actually I've, I've heard from um, their co-mentor that having a, um, an in-country mentor, and I've actually experienced it myself, having an in-country mentor, whether they're uh, a prior mentee or whether they're just a mentor recruited from in-country is a really valuable asset to the, to the team because, yeah. And we have two questions, which are on one side is like, how do you build community between the mentors themselves? And then the other is what sort of activities do you do to build for those community, that feeling of community and relationships between the mentors and, me and mentees? So those are the two. Yeah. The two yeah. Sides. So um, the, the, how we build relationships between, from mentor to mentor um, has in the past been these, in the, in the, in the beginning was these um, in residence programs where all the mentors would get together, they would all work together. Um, they would have a pre pre kickoff meeting, you know, talk about one another's experience. And then of course, there's a lot of, there's a lot of socializing and, and that goes on during the week of the in residence. So that is how it happened. Uh, or that is how it happened for me when I joined 10 years ago. Um, but I also, um, I think starting about eight years ago, we ended up having always a co-mentor. And so having a co-mentor for six months to nine months, you get to really know at least one other mentor in the network really well, right? Uh, and then every year you'd get, for me, every year I would get a new mentor, co-mentor, co and then it would be another new mentor that I could um, get to know. But since, and then since I started, uh, we also, in addition to having the, the uh, in residences, we started mentor networking events just so that mentors could meet meet up. And um, a lot of our mentors like to drink wine. And so we have um, um, uh, meetings in local wine bars, um, or we had, and we will uh, hopefully do that again. Over COVID, we've been having, we have quarterly mentor networking events through Zoom with breakouts, um, you know, um, and, uh, and those have been helpful. We also um, initiated in the last year, a um, when a cohort starts, um, we have, we'll have for the first um, three, three or four months, we'll have monthly mentor only meetings for the cohort. So the mentors can log in and we have a topic to discuss based on where they are in the, in the, in the curriculum as a starting point. Uh, and then we break out into sessions and have, we just facilitate our, my experience has been the mentors don't like slides so much. They don't necessarily want to be told what to do. They just like to find out from one another what, what, what their experiences are. And so we facilitate as much as we can breakout sessions. And, and that's helped a lot, um, get people to know one another more. And for the and, mentor, are there any specific? Yeah, it's, it's harder, you know, um, the, the networking through um, the mentees is, has been harder. Um, be, uh, uh, because we have been trying to approach it in a voluntary basis. And what we're finding is that we actually, because of the um, entrepreneurs are so busy, they don't necessarily have time for anything that isn't, that isn't mandatory. And mm -hmm. so what we have started to do is, is create um, like um, as, uh, entrepreneur buddies, where in a cohort, they will have one other entrepreneur that they have to present an idea to once, um, I think once every, once a month, maybe to try and build that uh, cohort experience. The mentees in the past, the in-residence has been the primary place where they, they coalesce as a group and they form and, and um, you know, every year is, every class is different, but many of them are, are still tightly um, integrated. Uh, re recently, uh, we also have been experimenting with, with our alums and having leadership circles. So um, we have a group of, alums from India meet with a facilitator once a month and, and, and it's a CEO roundtable. Um, uh, and then we also have one focused in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. So that is a way that we're building mentee, um, mentee in, you know, cohort relationships, mentee to mentee. Mm -hmm. Um, and the last question is, uh, and if people have more questions, it's totally fine, but we also want to open it up to you all. If, you, if any of you have mentor networks as well to kind of share your experiences with the group, but uh, Derek wanted to know, what are the metrics you track around mentor performance, if any? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, the, where, we've, where we've started our focus on performance is, is to track how often and, and what uh, the mentors do and who they help so that we can, um, 
compile um, a summary of their dashboard and thank them for it at the end of, um, well, right now it's at the end of a, a, their 10 years. So, you know, just so you know, we have mentors who've been in the network since, since I think the very, very beginning. So we have one mentor who's been around since 2004, right? Uh, and so what, what we found for, for mentor participation is if they have a good experience, their first and first or first and second, or, or at least they're within their second opportunity, they come around, um, they, they come back every year. Uh, and uh, those returning mentors are really high value, right? And so we initiated a tracking of, you know, the value of, of the returning mentor and, and, and we track the value on how their entrepreneur um, succeeds. So whether they were able to get funding, whether they, you know, how they scaled their impact, uh, and we will report on that. Um, we also, um, we collect uh, survey data from our entrepreneurs and our mentors. And so we, um, we can track uh, the performance of mentors that way, but we have also found that most of the time, uh, nobody in this, these relationships, nobody wants to, to throw anybody under the bus. Uh, and so the, the, what we struggle with more is to actually know whether the feedback is, is honest or not, right? Um, you know, how honest the feedback is. Um, but that being said, we will also, I mean, uh, one of the other way we, we subjectively collect performance data is um, uh, cultivate a, a um, very open um, attitude to, you know, call us with any issues you have. And so I will, you know, if, and if the mentor trusts me, you know, we develop trust. And if they do trust, then I will hear about things. Um, and, but, but uh, the things I will hear about in that way are, are never deal breakers. If it's a deal breaker, we hear about it right away from, from mentors and entrepreneurs, yeah. Uh, we so, have one, one final, we have a lot of questions today, which is great. But if anyone does wanna jump in and share their experience, um, please, please feel free. But uh, what, what inspired you to transition from being a mentor to actually a staff member of Miller Center? Um, so I, uh, you know, I've been a mentor, was a mentor for, for uh, I think like seven years before I became the mentor network director. And I um, loved a lot of the stuff that they did, but some of the stuff, um, um, it wasn't as structured as I thought it could be. I have, um, I have a consulting background in, in, in systems and, you know, management systems and, and, you know, tracking and saying and doing what you're going to do and tracking it and reporting it. Right. So it's all structured and process. I have a process mind and there wasn't um, as, as readily available. The, the mentor network itself wasn't organized in uh, as, as process, as, as, uh, um, transparently as it could have been on how they did things. And it was, um, it was all in the minds of a couple of individuals who had natural talent in human resources and managing people, um, but, but perhaps not as much talent in, in um, communicating and structuring and organizing um, a service organization. And so I came in and said, well, what would I like? You know, what was missing for me? Um, and, uh, you know, and, and it was all about feedback and you know, what is my impact? And, and, um, and then after I got on board, it quickly became, we were, I think we were um, less than a hundred mentors when I started and we went through a, a high growth phase. So I quickly had to um, focus on, you know, how to grow the network. What, it, what are the systems in place? Because one person couldn't, couldn't do it all. So how to, how to make all of that automated um, more so than it was about, you um, um, what I originally wanted was to make make um, the mentor's job that much easier. Um, and in the last year, we since we've been offering these new programs to mentors, it feels like it's more along the lines of, you know, this is what I wish I'd had when I started. A little bit more structure um, and an ability to, to, well, one of the things we've, because I experienced it myself, a lot of mentors don't want to bother the Miller Center because they know we're so busy. And so, they won't bother the Miller Center because 
we know they know we're so busy and instead they'll sit there with a question in their mind for six months you know and then they'll come to some event and they'll go oh oh that's what it is or they may at that point ask the question you know six months ago i was wondering so we've been cultivating more of a just ask please don't you know you're not bothering us so so that that was something we had to to um it was just a change of communication call us because i i know for a fact had i any had i any questions about and i did but i didn't want to bother the pre, my predecessor because i you know he must be busy um uh, and i also have to say that when i started it was part-time um and it was really a more than a full-time job even and so i i totally get why the uh my predecessors didn't have the systems in place because they were um yeah but uh and then uh it was just a for the other piece that was just another thing that i could do to help miller center in a different way yeah. so in the last five minutes that we have here together we we would really love to hear from you all if you want to un unmute yourself just if you have a program um, any sort of insights from this call or anything that you'd like to share that was sparked from, from this sort of uh, conversation that we've had today. I invite you to do that in the last five minutes of the call. We can even popcorn, popcorn style if you like to go around, around the room and share. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I want to point out one thing that, that Miller Center has started doing. Um, we, we work with other accelerators. Uh, we partner with them um, if their mission aligns with ours um, and, and the stars align for other various reasons. Um, and we have lent them mentors, right? So uh, Innovation Works in Baltimore is an accelerator, a, a local accelerator for uh, social enterprises in Baltimore. And they loved our model. They partnered with us. They are using our curriculum and they are using for their mentor teams, one mentor from Miller Center, and then they're finding a mentor from Baltimore. Um, and um, so I don't know if, 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 uh, if there are organizations in this call that, that um, you know, uh, pooling resources in this way and not reinventing wheels in this way is um, is great. So consider that as well. Lorna, did you want to go? Uh, sure. I'm part of an organization that's been around for 75 years and has a history of uh, accompaniment, uh, as it has been called. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we've just more recently realized that we, uh, we really should be starting a mentorship program. So we're just launching one now. So uh, everything what, you, what you're saying is uh, resonating with, uh, with how we're starting off. So thank you very much. Great, fantastic. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank uh, Lee and also Sarah for the organization of this event. It's been really helpful to know your experiences. Um, in my case, I work at CCP, which is a support organization uh, for SEOs. So we support accelerators, incubators, and other organizations that support startups. Uh, we are having an initiative uh, to build up a mentors open platform that support the Peruvian ecosystem first, then we can open this to the region. So we're doing some tests and really has been really, really good for us to hear all about your experiences. And, and yeah, I don't know, maybe I can share uh, something that we have built also based on Techstars Mentor Manifesto. I think that's very valuable if someone wants to also take us context and they have like a list of different uh, affirmations that help guide the investor, sorry, the mentor's path during um, their mentor sessions. And yes, we are trying uh, piloting this idea uh, with our partner organizations. And we're using Airtable, uh, which has been 
really interesting to test. And mm -hmm. I can share also uh, the link of this manifesto if you want to try. If you're interested in supporting Peru, we will be really glad if you could join. I know if someone is a mentor is going to to focus on Latin America, we're really glad to have him board. Great. Yeah, share the link. Perfect, thank you. Thanks, Paula. Um, I don't know if Marika, you wanted to go since you turned your video on. <laughs> if not, it's fine. <laughs> Oh, bless you. Thank you. No, I, I wasn't wasn't going to, but I thought I will just join in. Like I've been listening, and, and it's been it's been it's been great to hear. I, I work for an organization in the UK. Actually, my colleague Nazi is on the call as well. So we 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 run a mentoring program and 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 give lots of other types of support as well to social entrepreneurs in the UK. Um, and my question there, uh, which which you covered, was about the community building between mentors. That's something that we feel it's a bit of a missed opportunity but we struggle with still yeah. to to just find the format because everyone is so busy so I think in theory whenever we talk about it to our mentors they are they're keen they'd like to do something but then when the time comes and you try and get people to join that's where that that's that's been that's been challenging so yeah. that was that's something that we were sort of grappling with a little bit yeah making the our the weekly hourly call mandatory changed everything Right. It required them to have conversations on a weekly basis. Um, and within any relationship, it's not the first call that solidifies anything and makes it worth worthwhile. It is some it is at some point the trust is built and it might be pretty quickly, depending on the event individuals. It might be it might be a month or two. But at some point, the team has an aha experience where they go, wow, this was great. Mm. This, uh, you know, OK next week i'll call you next week right and so then it becomes something really great but the making it mandatory uh, for long enough to for the entrepreneur to realize the value is is kind of key and then every once in a while you get an entrepreneur that is just going through the hoops um, and then we'll make the call because it's mandatory but they don't really care that's a you know that's an expectation and yeah Perfect. Well, I just want to honor everyone's time because we are at time uh, at the top of the hour. And just to thank Lynn again so much for her time and her expertise and sharing with, with everyone. And we'll be sending out a recap email um, with this recording and some, some points um, and be in touch with you all. If you're not part of our membership community yet, be in touch with you all about joining us. Um, and just have a wonderful rest of your week and weekends, everyone. Thank you so much for your time and joining us today. Take care. Thank you.